Well, after we moved in, there was this location that seemed wanting for something. Mm -hmm. And Steve had the idea of commissioning an artist to do some sort of wall piece on the ceiling. And after a lengthy discussion, we decided that Paul was the best candidate for that because we knew that in terms of his hybrid work that he could incorporate the inside and the outside, incorporate the history of the house a little bit, as well as the surrounding area and make something really exciting. We saw that space as a very uh, a unique opportunity to have one of our artists do a site-specific installation in that space. We have several artists who we, we considered to do something um, I suddenly, it, it, it hit me one day after making a trip up there, which you can only get there by crawling through a small crawl space outside our bathroom. You have to climb a ladder. And it's a mess. It's an attic. It's dusty. There's only rafters. There's nowhere to sit. You have to kind of crawl on your hands and knees. And I saw just tons of dead flies and spiders and bugs and things like that. And I immediately thought, you know, Paul Payment would be an ideal possibility for this project because his work deals with hybrids of bugs and the evolution of bugs and in any old home there's a history there's ghosts there's a lot of things that are happening um with the, with the history of a, of a home and i figured let's take the concept of the bugs who have lived and died for 100 you know 100 years in this attic and give them a new life by having them swarm out of the space that they're able to get out of and then hybrid into the uh, c contemporary objects of today. My name is Paul Payment. <laughs> <laughs> I started thinking about this idea of the swarm, and, and I had talked to Heather and Steve about using the outside and the park that's around here and incorporating those things in, but also the idea of, of moths going into the attic was another thing that that came into this into this concept and and I'd been using these uh, this morphing imagery before but never in this manner before. I've always been fascinated by this idea that insects and and uh, bugs haven't really evolved. They've kind of stayed the same through you know the last whatever you know six thousand years or ten thousand years, six hundred million years, right? They've <laughs> they've been pretty much the same and. Um, and I love the fact that technology is changing so quickly, you know, that like a phone that we had last year is, you know, now obsolete, you know, and everything's changing so quickly. So there's an element of time in it. And that's where the morphing stages come in, too. So these, um, you know, these PlayStations, the, uh, the joysticks, the uh, iPod speakers, all of those are, you know, already, by the time I've, I've gotten done painting them, they're yesterday's news. You know, they're yesterday's technology, and they're no longer relevant today. But the insects have stayed pretty much the same the whole time. Once we moved out of our house in the Richmond and moved here to our, uh, our new home in Buena Vista Park, we were able to see this space as a unique opportunity to have a unique piece by Paul that not only uses his his core objects which are bugs and technology but also to incorporate his his new ideas of installation um, site-specific installations these I've got some ideas for sculptural pieces but also I love the idea of um, relief pieces where the the pieces are actually part of the wall they're part of the architecture and this the this particular installation allowed me to do that too I mean that was like another foray into that with with this space, I mean, for one, it was on it was on a ceiling, you know, at the top of a staircase with skylight at the top. Um, so because of that, it dictated kind of what I had to do. The format was there. It wasn't something that that I had chosen, which to me is a lot more exciting because then I've really got to go back and, and think about how I can uh, take what I've done in the past and kind of incorporate it. In, um, and, and to change it and to have to modify it. And that's where the, the evolutionary stages come in rather than having that central image. The skylight created another challenge. But this space, of course, was a, a really unique space, you know, being at, um, a ceiling at the top of a stairway or staircase. All those things were really different and, and new. 
the unique opportunity when you are a gallerist is that you are able to commission your artists to do unique pieces for you, basically, which are which are which are unique and interesting and different from what you'd see in a gallery show. I, I really would like the viewer to see them more my paintings as more. Um, not necessarily as paintings, but as images, as part of as part of a room, as part of an experience, rather than um, an image that they might see in a book or in some other place. And so this this piece really kind of expands that idea because it's not it's not an image that you'd see on a wall. It's not framed. It's something that's part of an entire experience. Over, overall, when I first started the piece, I started off with with. Um, the overall kind of composition, you know, the swarm-like composition where there are all these moths involved in it and, and they're either ascending up into the attic or they're coming out of the attic, whichever way you choose to, to see it. Having the skylight there instead of a central image, it kind of forced me to, to break it up into steps instead, which I think is a little bit different because it's, um, it's more like animation. In a, in a sense, you know, it, it also evokes time, you know, as, the, as a progression, rather than something that's um, based on pure perception. One of the problems that I was faced with, too, is that I wanted to, to have these, um, this progression with moths in there with 96. I, originally, I didn't have 96 moths, but I knew that there was going to be a lot. In fact, I think originally I had 128. And the problem, of course, um, is because it's on the ceiling, is that it involves scaffolding, and also because there's a repetition of each image, it involves a lot of time on my, on my part, and it would have taken me a year to come up here to be in San Francisco every weekend, mm -hmm. painting each one of these moths, and that just seemed impossible. And um, I had worked on a couple of other installations a couple of months back where I was using aluminum. And one of the great things about aluminum is that, that it's so lightweight that you can you can affix it to a wall easily with double-sided tape, and it, it just seemed like the perfect, uh, the perfect solution. It's easy to use, it's, it's easy to cut out, it's lightweight, um, and it's, it works great to paint on. So I, I love painting on that surface, and it just seemed easy to be able to, to do that in my studio and then bring it up and actually install it here rather than having to paint it on, on site. I had been working with aluminum on other installation pieces I had done in the past. In 2006, I did uh, an installation at the Armory Center for the Arts. In 2005, I did an installation at Heather Marks Gallery. And I was using aluminum at that time as, uh, and using acrylic on aluminum rather than what I had been using in the past, which was egg temper on panel. It just it, it became impractical to have to use egg temper because it's so labor intensive. And, um, I'd been working with acrylic anyways, um, painting on aluminum, and it was just seemed like the, the right solution to be able to paint each one of these individual pieces on aluminum um, and then um, affix it to the ceiling rather than having to come up every weekend and, and, and paint for, for an entire year. I could work in my studio. With the, the installation at the Laguna Art Museum, what I was doing was trying to recreate this experience, this unnatural experience, but in an artificial sense. Everything that I was using was completely synthetic. It was um, artificial grass. There were lights that simulated the firefly experience. But also, in front of the, um, the firefly experience, there were didactic panels that were kind of like um, being in a natural history museum and they were um, small flashlights that were disguised as fireflies. And um, at the very ends of the flashlights were, um, the ends of them were painted with, a, uh, with fluorescent paint. And the fluorescent paint was activated by, by black lights that were, that were above. And so the, the color of the, the ends of the fireflies was ex the exact same color as the LCD lights in the fireflies. So w the viewer makes this visual connection between the firefly, the didactic panels, and then the LCD lights that are going off. But also part of that experience was um, a park bench. And the park bench really gave the viewer some time to take in the whole experience that they're seeing. And for me, that was so important because I, I thought of the whole experience as somewhat like um, a, a prosthetic limb that amputees that they get prosthetic limbs at first they say it's it's this awkward experience of trying to coordinate 
this limb with their with their arms or with their legs and then after a while it starts becoming like a, an incredibly natural experience and that's what I wanted to do with this piece was make this incredibly unnatural thin thing this synthetic experience into a very natural experience I think there's a significant interplay between the various media that he's using. Just to break it down more simply, between painting and installation. Starting with the split panels and then the dowel pieces where he's trying to animate and make a suggestion of movement or some kind of dynamism in the piece. That these forms can actually move and function is something real. And moving into the installations, obviously he can activate that because he can use the space, manipulate the space like he did at the Laguna Art Museum, also in the Sputnik piece and then the hybrids piece that he did for our gallery show. A couple years ago, he used these discs and then the discs would have these rotating forms on them. So it would almost feel like those could take flight. But I think what's exciting is with our piece, He's actually able to use the curved ceiling and create a vortex, so position the, the paintings in a way that suggests even more movement. And I feel that they more, they sort of feed off each other a little bit. And I think the paintings have become better and more interesting because of the installations, because he's thinking, again, on a grander scale, thinking about using space and creating a sense of movement and action. I think Paul is definitely among a lot of those artists that are trying to take painting to a different level.